Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Elecro 5-inch IPS display for the Raspberry Pi. Now, if you watch my channel, you know I've done a lot of reviews on these smaller displays that you can pick up on eBay and Amazon. And I've personally been searching for a 4 to 5 inch IPS display that's fully compatible with the Pi 4. And I think I may have found the one I've been looking for in this one here. So obviously we have a 5 inch IPS display. It connects to the Raspberry Pi over HDMI. And we don't have to have any long cords sticking out of the side of this thing because they do offer the U-shaped adapters for the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 4. It also comes with all the hardware we need to get the Raspberry Pi mounted up to the back of this display. And it comes with a heatsink slash fan. So yeah, I've been looking for one of these for a while. Nobody has been making the IPS displays that are compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4 until now, and this one definitely looks promising. It's got minimal bezels, and if we take a look around back here, the Pi is going to mount to the back of this. We're going to plug in with one of the USB ports to this micro USB port here. We have full-size HDMI, fan connector. We also have a backlight button, volume up and down, another micro USB in case you want to externally power this. And this display actually has a single speaker built into the back of it, which is a really cool little plus. So this pretty much has everything that I've been looking for in a little 5-inch screen, but one thing I'm not liking are the mounting holes on each side, but these can be easily cut off. So I'm going to go ahead and slam this thing together. It's actually super easy. I have my Raspberry Pi 4 here, and I also have a Pi Juice hat. I do want this to be battery powered, so I'll be opting for the Pi Juice hat for this video at least. So the Raspberry Pi 4 actually mounts to the back of this display, keeping it as compact as possible. This works with the Raspberry Pi 3, 3B+, and the Raspberry Pi 4. And since video is fed to this display over HDMI, it should work with any HDMI-enabled device, as long as you have power going to the screen and HDMI to the video input. So in order to get this put together, the first thing I'm going to grab are the smaller brass standoffs, and I'm going to screw them into the four holes on the back of the screen here. This is what the Raspberry Pi 4 is going to sit on top of. And once I have that finished, I'm going to grab the Raspberry Pi, and as you can see, it fits perfectly right on top of here. They also include the screws we need to mount this down to the back of the display. Looks like everything's lining up. Now, since I'm using the Raspberry Pi 4, I'm going to grab the bag with the Raspberry Pi 4 adapters. There's one HDMI adapter, full size on one side, and micro on the other for the Raspberry Pi 4. Just going to slide right in here. And I really like the way this is set up because it is all out of the way. You won't see any of these from the front. And we also have our USB adapter to power the screen from the Pi and allow touch to work. And as soon as I get this in here, we are basically done with the assembly of this 5 inch screen. So yeah, as you can see, we don't see any of those adapters whatsoever from the front here. And it just makes it a really clean setup. And since we're running touch from the screen over USB and video over HDMI, 98% of all operating systems that are available for the Raspberry Pi won't require any driver. And I say 98% because I know there are a few out there that don't have the touch driver pre-installed, like RetroPie. But if you want to run something like Raspberry Pi OS, it'll work right out of the box. And that's what we're going to do right now. So since I'm not using battery power right now, I'm just going to plug right into the USB Type-C port on the Raspberry Pi 4. The screen should be powered from the USB port that we have plugged in to the Pi 4. Give it a second for everything to boot up. And I have not messed around with anything in the config.txt. In the manual, they do have a little setup that you can go through, but I wanted to see how it worked just directly out of the box over HDMI. And there we have it. We have picture. Let's test touch. And it's working with no drivers installed whatsoever, at least with Raspberry Pi OS. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned so far was the resolution of this screen. It actually looks really good for what it is. It's 800 by 480, and that's really what you're going to get with these smaller screens for the Raspberry Pi. Volume control and brightness control is working. Let's check out sound. I'm going to go ahead and launch a game from the menu here. and sound isn't working yet. There's one thing that I need to check out before we get to it, and I was a little worried about this. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to fix it very easily, but sound from that rear speaker just isn't working straight out of the box. And it was a pretty easy fix. I just opened up Terminal, Raspi Config, headed over here to the menu, Advanced Options, Audio, and I made sure that Force HDMI was enabled. You'll have to do a reboot if you haven't already. 
and now we have sound working out of the single speaker on the back of this display. And it's not that bad. I mean, you can definitely hear this. I'll make sure I have the volume on the unit itself turned all the way up and volume in software, well, Raspberry Pi OS. Yeah, so that's working, and it sounds pretty decent for being a single speaker on the back of this thing. There's one last thing I want to test here, and that's going to be screen tearing. So I can head over to YouTube and just do a little screen tearing test. Whenever I get a new screen for the Raspberry Pi, I always check out this video on YouTube. It'll give you an idea if there's any screen tearing, and there's none going on with this one. So it's looking pretty good so far. Viewing angles are great because it's an IPS display. I mean, it's not a super high quality IPS, but it's one of the better 5 inch screens that I've seen for the Raspberry Pi. Moving over to the battery test, like you saw, I'm going to be using this Pi Juice hat. It's not going to last a long time because we have Raspberry Pi 4 and a 5 inch screen that we need to power off a 1820 milliamp hour battery. But I'm really interested to see if it'll even power the Pi and the screen at the same time. I'm pretty sure it will. So I'll go ahead and slide the hat on. And I didn't notice it, but the Pi Juice hat was already turned on, so it automatically started to boot the Pi. I'm going to flip this around and give it a little time to boot. Hopefully it works. Not sure if it's going to come on. There we go. So yeah, it is working. I don't have a lightning bolt up in the top right hand corner yet, and that's a big plus. Let's just check sound here. I mean, there's really no reason it shouldn't still be working, but... Awesome, it is working. So I'm fully battery powered here with the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm at the stock clocks of 1.5 gigahertz, but I do have this 5 inch IPS display attached to it. Really cool to see this. Alright, so the last thing I wanted to test was a little bit of emulation. We're going to be going with Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. I have this Switch controller connected, and it's connected over Bluetooth. It shows up as a Lick Pro controller, but it does work with Linux. So we'll go in here and we'll start up Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So far, so good. I'm not seeing any screen tearing or anything like that. And the big plus is I'm not getting that lightning bolt icon up in the top right hand corner. So we're not undervolting this Raspberry Pi and the screen with the Pi Juice hat. So it's working out pretty good. So overall, I really do like the screen. The colors are a bit muted for my liking, but this is the best that I've found so far for the project I want to use one of these for. And we also have that built-in speaker, which is a big plus. Pretty much everything worked out of the box with Raspberry Pi OS, except for sound. All I had to do was switch it over in the Raspberry Pi config, so it really wasn't a big deal. And in the end, this is an overall great little screen. I love the form factor, the fact that we don't have any wires sticking out. It connects right over HDMI and USB, and that's all we really need from the Pi to the screen. So I picked mine up on Amazon for around $55. I have seen these cheaper on other websites, but you're going to wait a long time for shipping. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave a few links in the description. And definitely keep an eye on the channel, because now that I have the screen I'm going to be using, I will have a handheld up very soon. But that's it for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.